How's it going guys? Riley here with Dark Arrow. We've been building the Dark Arrow 1 prototype and a lot of our recent progress has been on the engine installation. We're pretty close to having the engine install complete, so I thought it'd be a good time to take a look at the specifics of our engine installation on the Dark Arrow 1. Let's check it out. Okay, if you're not familiar with our project or the engine that we're using, I'll give you a quick overview. So this engine is the UL 520 IS made by UL Power in Belgium. This particular engine is 200 horsepower and it's six cylinders, air-cooled, direct drive, and naturally aspirated. It's a very modern engine, so it's electronic ignition, fuel injected, and ECU or FADIC control. The way we have it set up, there's two sets of everything for redundancy, so two sets of sensors, two fuel pumps, two ignition systems, and two ECUs. And the engine can burn both automotive fuel and aviation fuel. Now let's talk about the specifics of our installation in the Dark Arrow 1. We're gonna start talking through the engine installation on the pilot side of the firewall and then work our way across the engine over to the co-pilot side and talk through the systems in that direction. So starting off, right on the firewall here, we have two batteries, which between the batteries and the alternator provide the source of electrical power for the aircraft. We have two batteries for redundancy and they're mounted on a mounting plate here with these brackets and that allows us to service them by pulling the whole unit off. One of the concerns with mounting uh, this type of battery or any type of battery for that matter on the hot side of the firewall is uh, temperature. So we don't want the batteries to get too hot. So what we're gonna do is actively cool the batteries by putting a cooling box over this whole battery assembly and that'll have air flowing through it which comes off uh, bleed air from the cylinder cooling plenums. As long as I'm touching on the cylinder cooling, let's take a look at that. This engine is air-cooled and each bank of cylinders has its own air box or air cooling plenum, which you can see here, this big aluminum box. Uh, the top is removed from this box so that you can see inside here, but air basically comes in the front of the box and slows down and diffuses and then travels over the cylinder cooling fins and then out the bottom of the engine. Uh, so this box is all closed out and looks basically the way you would see it in the final version, minus these Clecos here. Uh, so the top is removable, held in place with some screws and nut plates. You can take them off for service. And then this is a 3D printed inlet, which is temporarily fastened on the entry to the air box. Uh, so these are going to get riveted in place uh, once we're ready for the final installation. So going back to the batteries, they are charged by the alternator. This is the alternator regulator. And what this unit does is it basically takes a three phase alternating current from the alternator and converts it to a direct current at a specific voltage so that it can charge up the batteries. And we mounted it right here on the top of the firewall on the pilot side. Uh, moving on across the engine, uh, you can see in the cooling boxes here, the ignition wires or ignition cables and the spark plugs. Those are fed through these wires and they're fed by the uh, ignition coils over on this side of the firewall. So we have a dual redundant ignition system. So there's two sets of ignition coils here. The ignition coils are controlled by the ECU, which uh, sits on the cold side of the firewall. And one of the remaining tasks for the ignition system is I just want to get a little bit of a clip or some method to constrain these wires running from the other side of the engine so they're not flopping around and vibrating too badly. Okay, we talked about that. Let's move on to the oil system. So right at the top of the firewall here, we have the oil separator. And what this unit does is it takes uh, the crankcase blow-by air, which com is comprised of uh, air and an oil mist. And this separates the oil mist out of that air and allows it to return back to the oil sump. And then the air or the blow by air exhausts through the bottom of this unit and out the exhaust. And what this main benefit of this is that it reduces oil consumption and it also keeps the belly of your aircraft clean so you don't have a bunch of oil slick on your aircraft. Uh, the other piece of the oil system on this side of the engine is our oil cooler or the oil heat exchanger here. So this is fed oil through the oil thermostat and cools your oil and keeps it at optimum operating temperature. So air flows through the oil cooler through this duct and diffuser. Uh, we don't have the inlet for this unit installed right now, but I think you can get the idea of how it'll function. So air comes through here, 
uh, blows over a bunch of cooling fins in the oil cooler and then exhausts out the back of the cooler and out the bottom uh, exit of the cowling by the exhaust here. Uh, so the, you'll notice the oil lines coming in to the oil cooler. There's an inlet and an outlet line. And if you peek across the engine over here, you can see where they are fed from the oil thermostat, which is this unit. Uh, another thing you'll notice over here is the oil filter, which is really easily accessible and easy to get at if you're going to change the oil. So that's one feature we like about this engine is just how serviceable it is with that oil filter located right in front. Okay, as long as we're peeking down at the bottom of the engine, we'll take a look at the uh, heat exchanger for cabin heat, which is this unit. So the idea here is uh, it uses waste heat from the exhaust to heat up air and that which is sent into the cabin to keep the cabin warm in uh, cold operating environments or at altitude. So air comes in from one of the cylinder cooling boxes here, runs through this scat duct uh, over a bunch of uh, fins in this heat exchanger, which uh, allows it to heat up. And then it's, it's sent through this duct into a valve on the firewall here, which governs the amount of heat coming in and out of the cabin. Okay, I think we talked through everything on this side of the engine and we'll head back over to the other side to talk about the fuel system. So over on the workbench here, I have a couple of the remaining components of the fuel system. These are the fuel pumps. We have two fuel pumps for redundancy and they're connected through a common line. Okay, so it'll flow from the fuel pump through this bulkhead fitting, which will be on the firewall, and then to the secondary fuel filter, which will be mounted on the firewall. Uh, both of these units are gonna be mounted with click bonds. We have a couple more click bonds to install on the firewall. Uh, they kind of look like this when they're fully installed. So once it passes through the secondary fuel filter, it's gonna travel up to the engine so this line is temporary right now for initial line sizing, but it's going to come from the fuel filter up to this common high pressure fuel rail up here, which is uh, all these fuel lines that have fire sleeve on them. So this all sits at basically the same pressure. And then these feed the fuel injectors, which you can see on the tops of uh, the cylinders here. So there's one fuel injector for each cylinder. Okay, so once it passes through this uh, high pressure fuel rail, feeds the cylinders, any fuel that's not used is dumped through the fuel pressure regulator, goes back through this line and returns back to the fuel sump, uh, which is back behind the firewall. And there's a check valve uh, on the cold side of the firewall as well, which prevents any backflow in the system. One last thing to touch on, as long as we're over here, you can see the cylinder cooling boxes. Uh, these are cylinder head temperature sensors. So there's one for each cylinder and those allow us to monitor and gauge the uh, condition of the temperatures in our cylinders. So what do we have left to fully finish up our engine installation? A bunch of little miscellaneous tasks. Uh, the intake here for the oil cooler has to be completed. That's 3D printed. And then we're gonna install the throttle cable so that we can control the throttle on the engine. Uh, also need to install the intake for the engine here so that it can breathe and the intake for this cylinder cooling plenum So all these intakes are 3d printed and there's just a little bit of a lead time on those items So hopefully those will show up in the next week or so Also, there's a bunch of little miscellaneous clips to constrain these ducts and electrical wires So this guy needs to be tied up constrained a little bit better um, The ignition wires which I mentioned before and the CHT wires will constrain all those and then over here with the electrical system, we've got to finish up this uh, little battery cooling box. And then we're going to install a master relay and a couple fuses over here. Once we have all that done, we can install the titanium heat shield and the insulation on the firewall. And then we'll be ready to rock. All right, guys, that's all on the engine installation for today. We have a couple more videos coming up as we finish up the engine installation. So be sure to subscribe if you want to stay up to date on all that. If you have any questions or comments on anything that I talked about, just leave it in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer you. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.